After a series of breaches at the White House, the Secret Service is under scrutiny again, and this time it involves the Houston home of former President George H.W. Bush. An investigation conducted by the Department of Homeland Security revealed that the house was not protected by a working alarm for at least 13 months, more than a year. The Secret Service did put one agent in a roving post to secure the resident, and no breaches were detected. But I want to bring in Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz of Utah to talk about this. He chairs the House over. Oversight Committee, which is charged with overseeing the Secret Service. So, Congressman, thanks for being with us. And, and uh, I want to read to you this statement that we have from the Bush family spokesman, Jim McGrath. He says, George and Barbara Bush have total confidence in the men and women of the Secret Service. Their trust in them is as unshakable as it is unbreakable. Okay, so they have confidence, but I would say this isn't that unusual. When there have been breaches, we hear President Obama stands by the Secret Service. Yep. These are, after all, the men and women who are protecting them. And uh, there's loyalty. And, and certainly you don't want to upset the people who are responsible for your safety. But you're in this oversight position, so what do you think? Well, I've known about this uh, for months. There are millions, literally millions of dollars of uh, technical problems that now have been rectified. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to talk about it until they had been solved. But the idea that for more than a year a former president is in a residence that doesn't have the basic alarm in place is, is totally unacceptable and i do appreciate director clancy now he's new to this uh but i think he is kind of taking charge and grabbing the helm here and trying to make the the right changes this is an important part of the process i don't think the secret service for more than a decade really had some meaningful oversight but i think what we're doing with elijah cummings the inspector general i think it is having an effect and Glad to see that change, but you can't leave somebody with that sort of degree of vulnerability for that long period of time. It's much more expensive to have to have an extra body there than it was to fix the alarm system in the first place. So how how did this happen? First of all, how was there this lapse where there was an alarm and maybe it was turned off, and then also you have this discovered by a DHS investigation. What if you can tell us? Shed a little light on that investigation as well. Well, I, I think we find for most of the presidents, the former presidents, to one degree or another, they had security problems because they did not have 100% operable systems. Uh, even the current vice president, Biden, had a problem out at his residence in Delaware. They will, the Secret Service will tell you that the alarm system was fully functional, but they didn't even have a camera out on the road out front. Now they do now. They've got some cameras that you can't see to have some visibility, but when we had shots fired, uh, outside his residence just a few months ago, there was no video footage, which is, I, I mean, I, that's just, to me, security basic 101. Um, and there were problems at other facilities as well. But again, I think now that they fixed this, but it, months ago, the IG was bringing this up. We were talking about it behind the scenes. and But this is basic law enforcement and protection 101. What about, I want to ask you about, there, we have so many issues when it comes to security and when it comes to the Secret Service and uh, the officials who are guarding not just the White House but the Capitol. And I know that you received a briefing yesterday from the police chief of the U.S. Capitol, Kim Dine, and also from Secret Service Director Clancy on this gyrocopter incident last week. Yeah. The pilot who managed to fly 30 miles into restricted airspace and then land right there on the west lawn of the Capitol, like in your backyard, yeah. basically. So what yeah. was the conclusion there? Well, unfortunately, NORAD and the, the, the Pentagon, uh, the FAA and the Park Police elected not to come brief Congress. We had four committees represented there, uh, bipartisan, behind the scenes, and to not have NORAD, the FAA, and the Park Police say and refuse to come brief Congress, I mean, that's wholly unacceptable. So we have noticed a hearing for next Wednesday, 10 a.m. That is not optional. They will be there, and we're going to get a much more full and complete story. Uh, I was very satisfied with the, with the Secret Service and their role and what they, they told us. It is primarily a U.S. Uh, Capitol Police, uh, the Capitol Police, as well as the Sergeant of Arms. There was human error. There was a lack of communication. And post 9-11, I, I got to tell you, we can't make these mistakes. I mean, one of the, the results of 9-11, the conclusion was you have lots of different agencies. They have to communicate and collaborate. And there clearly was some human error in this. But the gentleman who, uh, who flew this gyrocopter, he is lucky to be alive. Um, certainly, they had uh, the authority and the ability and almost uh, took him out of the sky. And uh, I, 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 it, it's a tough, difficult uh, judgment call by the men and women who serve us. 
and, and protect the Capitol. But I'm telling you, he was just a moment or two away yeah. from actually being uh, taken out. Sure was. Chairman, thanks so much for covering all of these you. topics with us. Really appreciate it.